Hey guys, what's up? Is old fantasy better than new fantasy or is new fantasy better than old fantasy? The fantasy art, the fantasy books, the fantasy comics that came out years and years ago, are they better than the newer stuff coming out now? Or is the newer stuff progressed and is on a better level than the older stuff is? Well, with fantasy art, the people that are really, really great, Boris Vallejo, um, Julie Bell, and um, Michael Whalen, people like that, Joe Jusco, you know, those guys have been doing fantasy art since the 70s, 80s, into today. And um, they're still the best fantasy artists today. There's some new fantasy artists that are coming out that have just been coming out like in the 2000s and the 2010s and stuff. I'm seeing a lot of nice, really cool fantasy art, especially with Photoshop and digital art, which is making another way to create this kind of fantasy art. I'm seeing that, but the old artists started with oil paints and acrylics to really um, express their ideas. And a lot of it is illustration. A lot of it is storytelling visually. It's like, what is, if I could put a picture on top of a novel, what would the picture be uh, that tells what that novel's about? And will it be compelling enough to make people actually take notice and say, I really wanna know what the story's about because look at this amazing illustration on the front of it. So while you could say that Boris Vallejo, um, Michael Whelan, these guys are still making art, um, and I think their, their art now is just as good as their art from uh, all those years back, since the 80s and 70s. Um, are they, you know, I would say those are like the older artists and I'm seeing the newer artists. And honestly, uh, a lot of the newer artists are kids. And so you can't really judge uh, the newer artists um, from being kids because like these kids can grow up into and, and their art could could um, uh, like evolve into something really, really great because you don't see the full potential yet because they're really still kids. You know, just just like uh, a lot of the good artists now, they became, you know, they had they had a higher potential like like Drew Struzan, uh, who did a lot of art. When they first, when he first started out, he was just like trying to do art, and it did it did evolve into something really, really great. And so, um, and so, like, so yeah, so there's there's the new kids that are doing art. There's the other people that are not kids that are really doing great art, also. But even they're fans of the older artists. You know, like the new fan, the new artists are fans of the older artists, and. Um, so like, like for, so fantasy art wise, I would say, huh, I would say like, I'm going to say the older stuff is better than the newer stuff. And honestly, like some guys are just not around anymore with, um, Mobius, Jean Gerard Mobius. He's not around anymore. And there's a few other guys, Juan Jimenez recently, he's not around anymore. Um, you know, just, there's a lot of guys who were great artists uh, who just aren't an, around anymore and just aren't making that kind of great art. With Mobius, I don't see a contemporary who's doing anything like Mobius's work. I see people copying, not copying, but being inspired by Mobius and their artwork looks a lot like Mobius. And I can understand being inspired by Mobius, just like looking at you know any of the old fantasy artists and being, and being inspired by them. Um, and so trying to make art that reminds you of them. And you, if you ask some of the newer artists, you will say, well, my art is just inspired by these artists and they're inspired by the old guys. So the, the new guys really are inspired by the old guys. And this is where the old guys have the advantage of time. You know, they're, they're, they're so good that they inspire new art. So the old art inspires new art. And so uh, with fantasy, it's a little bit different, like with, with novels and books. It's a little bit different. Uh, yeah, you're gonna get the older novels inspiring the new, newer novels with Michael Moorcock, Piers Anthony, um, J.R. Tolkien, um, you know, the guy that did uh, Game of Thrones. Um, you know, a lot of these people, like Game of Thrones is really, that, that, was, a, that was a story um, written in the 80s where the first Ice and Fire stories were written in the 80s. Um, the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit 
written way back, I don't mean the 60s and stuff, or even before that, like the 50s, and Michael Warcock's stuff, he's still doing great work now. Um, oh, you know, a little bit not as much fantasy as he's doing other stuff besides fantasy, but he's doing work now. And his work started in the 60s. Like his great stuff really came to fruition in the 70s. Because no, people don't usually like, you know, an artist probably goes a good 10 years before they're, they're recognized and their art has gotten to a certain level. And so... The question is, are there modern writers or modern storytellers, whether that's visual or written, modern storytellers that are as good um, as the older storytellers? Are there modern, writer, modern writers who are as good as the older writers? Like who writes now, who writes contemporary stories now that you can compare to uh, Tolkien or um, uh, Michael Moorcock or Piers Anthony or those guys? You know, who actually is writing the modern stories? And I don't really see... Uh, okay, disclaimer, I don't really... I haven't really been too into the newer stories. Now, I don't know... It's, it's not that I'm not interested in them. It's that I haven't really found them compelling. And I really... Whenever I go, you know, to go to a, like, fantasy story, I always try to, like, find, you know, what's the best one I can get? What's the most interesting one I can get? And it's usually a story from years back that I haven't read yet. You know, like something from the 80s that I didn't read yet. Something from before maybe the 70s that I haven't read yet. You know, and that's what I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to the classic cool story that people have been talking about for years that I haven't like have had a chance to read yet. And I have tried reading the newer stories and I just haven't gotten into them too much. And um, I just feel like a lot of them are stories that maybe, I mean, I don't know. It, it doesn't have any, it's not that what they're inspired by or anything. It's just that I just haven't gotten into any. I just haven't found a lot of the newer stories to be that really cool. However, with comic books, I think there's a different thing here. With comic books, then there's a lot of new stuff that's amazing, you know, but still there's a lot of old stuff that's amazing also. And so is the newer stuff better than the older stuff? Not really. Is it different? You know, not really. The newer stuff is not really different than the older stuff, except the newer stories tend to have newer technology in those stories, like cell phones and computers and things like that. You know, electric cars in the newer stories. The older stories don't have cell phones and computers, but the thing is with, with, with fantasy stories is they're kind of evergreen. They're kind of timeless, where the story that you're, you're, you're reading is not really going to have a lot of reflections about the, the modern world as it is. It's fantasy, so you're always going to be in this other world of magic or even sci-fi sometimes, you know, but the, the world is going to be another world, a different world, another dimension, another planet, um, another level of being, whatever it is, you know, another world in, in some way. And uh, there'll be other there'll be other laws of nature, like, like magic laws of nature, where th you, people are able to do things that you can't explain. Um, there's knights, and there's like dragons, or like monsters, or something, or beasts, or anything like that, and then you know it's a, it's, a, it's a fantasy story. The thing is, like, honestly, like, I don't know if I've really seen, and I've, I've, I haven't really tried to, but at the same time, I haven't really found anything new that I really liked. I did read some of the newer stuff, um, the Dresden Files, right, for example, that was considered, that that someone told me was going to be amazing. And I read kind of into the book, and I was just like, eh, it's okay. You know what I mean? It's okay. And it, it just didn't keep me interested. However, the Dresden Files in a comic book really was cool. I, li I, I like the Dresden Files in a comic book because exactly what happened in the book the author tries to describe action scenes as they're happening. And I think the way he's describing the scenes is not that effective and doesn't give you that full visual like Michael Moorcock describes as uh, action scenes where you actually like picture the actual battle taking place and what's really happening. And when they did um, the Dresden Files in comic book form, they were able to draw the scene out and draw like the what was happening out so you would see, you you would have this, you know, you would see what the people are saying. Maybe there's a description, a narration, and then you would see like 
Um, and then you would see the monster attacking Harry Dresden, and you would see Harry Dresden like hitting the monster with a rune staff and stuff like that. And so even the you know, and so you could see like how that worked really, really well as a comic book. And I think it worked a lot better as a comic book. And then also like the Elric stories and the Eternal Champion stories, the Michael Moorcock stories have also been turned into comic books. However, I feel like, okay, if you're going to turn, it's okay to turn, you know, a, like a story into a comic book. But the thing is that the Michael Moorcock stories were written so well that the comic book doesn't do it justice. I just feel like your, your imagination from his, from his words uh, are, are, is a lot more active just by reading the story. I mean, the story is perfect and it doesn't have to be retold. It's cool to see pictures of it. Of course, it's cool, you know, that's cool because like even if you look at some of the, the Elric art by Michael uh, Whalen, it's amazing art. And I see a lot of uh, recent Elric art or stories of the Eternal Champion or Elric stories or Mo Moorcock stories being drawn and created as art and that's really compelling and really good. Um, but uh, the thing is about, about those stories, I just think they're so good written down that uh, just making a comic book out of it, it's really, really hard to, to, to get to the to the same level as it, even though uh, the art in, in the comic books are good, I just don't think it does the story justice. And also, I just feel like it's not that they're, they're retelling the story in the comic book form, and that's not good. It is good, it's fine. But what they're doing also when they're changing that story, when they change a story into a comic book, like a novel into a comic book, what they do is, they summarize the novel. They cut stuff out of it. They make it just like, they make like, you know, like it would just be so much artwork and so labor intensive to uh, to draw every scene and tell every every scene and like every little panel and every time something happens, it would be like, it would be a like a thick comic book that would take like a year to draw and, and, and write and adapt into a comic book form, you know? But what happens is, is that it's not that they don't tell it. It's not that the changing it into a comic book form isn't cool. It's cool because you get to look at the art and the artist's impression of it and the artist's um, uh, interpretation of it, you know. But what's not cool is that they just like skip through all of it. They, they just cut out like, they show you the main parts and now they take the story and they just change it and they may just, they just summarize it. So it's not really a like an illustrated comic book version of the story. It's an illustrated summarized comic book version of the story. And that's the only thing that I don't really like about that. But once you already know the story, it's like, okay, you already know the story. You can just like take a ride on the comic book and it's fine. However, when they do like use characters or worlds from a story and create new and original content for a comic book adaptation, that usually works really, really well. Like with the Elric stories, they did um, they did a comic book adaptation, which was not part of the old novels, and it was a newly written story. It was in a six volume, in a six comic book. It was like six or seven uh, little floppy comic books, and they, they would release one every month. And even though it wasn't, I don't think it was good as good as the older um, older comic older like novel stories. I did think it was a good standalone comic book where the story was new, the story was different. The reason I think adaptations, which was like retelling the same story in a different form doesn't work, is because people already know what's gonna happen in the story. It's like, um, it's like basically before you even start reading the book, someone comes over and tells you exactly everything that happens in the book, the whole plot, <laughs> the, whole, the how it ends, everything that's interesting, what, you know, they, they just describe the whole book to you. And you might as well not read this book at, the, at this point because you already know everything that's going to happen. And that's why I feel like, oh, let's retell the same story in a different form doesn't really work because you already know the story. And that's why I think anytime there's a prequel, there's any kind of prequel where they, where they tell you, oh, this happened before is more of an, like, an informational book <laughs> that kind of describes the story beforehand. But it's not interesting enough because you don't know where it's, you already know where it's going to go. You already know what happens to the characters. It, you know, no one is on the edge of their seat saying, is this character going to survive? Is this monster going to gonna destroy the main character? I don't know what's going to happen, right? Because you already know what's going to happen. And it's not interesting because of that. So it's real hard to do a prequel. 
I would say forget about doing prequels. What I would do instead is do a sequel and do like a flashback, um, a flashback scene where the, you, you kind of show highlights of what happened before, like a flashback, so that you're not like making a whole book prequel. Yeah, right. So if that, that's if you want to put flashbacks into your book. But anyway, so like, but the newer, like, I don't really see, and I'm sure there are some really good new, uh, new fantasy novels and you know but they've changed the genre a lot you know back in the day there was just fantasy and now it's like young adult fantasy and different kinds of fantasy and um uh all different kinds of fantasy it's it's like uh they, they they've changed fantasy urban fantasy right um they've changed fantasy into a lot of subgenres, and um, I don't see, like, and, and the latest really, the latest fantasy novelist, the most known, the one that's really taken off, is the Harry Potter books, you know? And the thing is about the Harry Potter books, they're cool, but they're very much like a kid's story, sort of. I mean, they're, child, they're kid-friendly, and you don't have to be a kid to like that story, but it is a kid's story. It's about a kid, and, you know, and their destiny, and, and, and how they were kind of like mistreated growing up, but then they got, you know, then they found out who they were and they were taken in and, and, and shown more about who they were. And, and then they were shown their destiny and they found that they had powers and they had like, uh, they went to this like school where they were taught magic and things like that. And that was interesting, you know, there were a lot of other stories that were like that. Oliver Twist was like that. Um, there was a lot of stories like that. E even, even, um, uh, the, there, there, there was, there were like the the chocolate fact. Willy Wonka, the chocolate factory was like that, where the kid was poor, the family was poor, and then because he was so cool, or whatever, because he passed the test or whatever happened, and then he, he inherited like the biggest chocolate factory in the world, and so that was recent science fiction. That was recent fantasy. Game of Thrones. My, some people might think that's recent fantasy. It's not. It's from the eighties. Game of Thrones books came out in 1980 when someone recommended it to me and I bought it and I just couldn't get into it. I couldn't get into Game of Thrones. Dune um, is is from also like from the 70s, Dune. And it was like, and people are talking about it now all these years later. And so I haven't found a lot of new stuff because the stuff they're doing now is the stuff that was written way back when, you know, like, Lord of the Rings became big. That was never big. That was like a kind of like a, an old fantasy story that a lot of people didn't hear about. Lord of the Rings became big. Game of Thrones became big. That was also from the 80s. That's an old story. So where are the newer stories, you know? And I don't see a lot of the newer stories in novel form, but I do see a lot of newer stories. There's a lot of cool new artwork, a lot of cool new fantasy art that's happening with people that are very, very talented. And I like some of the newer stuff, even though I love the older stuff and what they're still doing now. Uh, but the newer comic books also are really good. Like it's not every, like every year, there's only gonna be a, a handful of um, really good comic books that stand out. And honestly, like comic books are good for that, that they stand out. Basically like people are gonna publish a few comic books and if they don't catch on, people don't read them, and people don't don't talk about how good they are. They're just gonna they're gonna stop writing that story, that comic book story, and they're gonna try to tr write a different comic book story. Because comic book artists are gonna draw comics, and comic book writers are gonna write comics, you know. And and if the, the, their story doesn't pick up, and people don't don't start buying it and listen, and reading it, and and telling people it's a great story or, or liking it, um, they're just gonna maybe say, well, this story didn't pick up. We're gonna do a different story. Which is cool because they, they took all that they learned from the other from the from the previous story and put that into the new story. Maybe the writer became a better writer, a better storyteller. Maybe the artist, after drawing a lot of the older stuff, is a better artist, and now the newer artwork is going to be better. And I find that that's still relevant. I still like going to a comic book store. Um, the, the the I think that the floppies in the comic book store are really relevant, even though. I'm going to say about the comic book store is like 80% of everything is superhero based, which is cool if you like superheroes, but that's okay. But they should make more comics that are not superhero based. 
um, because you could, comics is just a medium and for fantasy, it's perfect. And you know, to tell fantasy stories, it's perfect because fantasy art is compelling, fantasy stories are amazing. And uh, you just like just putting that together, you get a fantasy comic. You know, they can keep making superhero comics, that's fine if they like superheroes and they wanna make superhero comics, that's okay. You know, but there, there's an open um, area there where you can do a lot of cool fantasy comics. Now, with, with, with comics, when you look back at the comics that, um, that were made in the in the 80s and the 70s obviously like there were a lot of comics made in the 60s and the 50s and whatever i'm not too familiar with that those comics are very expensive and they're hard to get and they're hard to read and, and usually comic book people do not read comic books that old because only collectors have those and they do not let anyone touch them or read them and so but the but the comics from the 80s the trade paperbacks that have been on the shelves for years and years um, there's a lot of great ones and most of them are just great. And what's cool about that is you can always like, if it's really considered a great comic, chances are it's pretty much a really good comic. Even if you don't think it's amazing or the best comic ever, you'll still pro probably like the story. And so, so those old comics are relevant and they're still good and they're probably always going to be really good. Uh, but the new comics, there's always great new comics coming out. Uh, Heavy Metal Magazine is constantly making new stuff and they're they're always on the end. They're always making new stuff. They're never rehashing the older stuff. They might be using the older artists sometimes and the older writers sometimes, but they're always making new stuff. Nothing in, in the modern, even though they have old older Heavy Metal Magazines, the newer Heavy Metal Magazines are con they're constantly like, you know, publishing newer, cranking out newer Heavy Metal Magazines and, and stuff like that. So they're always on the forefront of new stuff. So with so with, with novels, maybe there's some new good novels that I haven't heard of that I'd like if I tried, that'd be cool. But I'm gonna say the older novels, those are the ones I know and I feel like they're still amazing and they're still amazing after all these years and I haven't read all of them and I probably wanna read more of them. And fantasy art, it used to be amazing. The people that were making it back in the day are still making it today and that's amazing. The newer guys are, are amazing and they're going to be better and they're going to make better art and they're going to make amazing art. And the comics that are coming out, there's always going to be great comics always coming out. So even though there's a lot of great classics that you should definitely read and definitely check out and a lot of the older stuff, there's also the newer stuff that I think is worth checking out because I'm sure some of it is just really, really cool. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you guys think um, in the comments or anything like that. And yeah, uh, I hope you liked the video. Um, like and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos if you want. And I will see you guys later in another video. Take care.